Welcome to another Keep It Simple video with Professor Esther Dillard. This one is about Adobe Spark video and how to edit with it. I'm not going to do a two minute video like I try to usually do to keep it short, keep it simple. This one is going to be a little bit longer, but it's going to be detailed enough that you can get up and going with Adobe Spark video in just a few minutes. <music> Before we get into the nitty gritty of how to edit with Adobe Spark video, I need to explain a couple of things. Number one, Adobe did offer Adobe Spark to only people who had mobile devices. So if you had an iPad or an iPhone or a um, Android mobile device, you could use it. Now they offered it so that you can use it on a laptop and that can be a regular PC or on a Mac. So you can use Adobe Spark video or Adobe Spark products on a Mac or a laptop. Now, the reason why I say Adobe Spark and Adobe Spark video, and I was trying to make those distinctions is because Adobe Spark is composed of three different type of things. There are Adobe Spark video, which we're going to be covering today. Adobe Spark post, which is something that you can create a, a still picture or graphics for perhaps um, Instagram or something like that. And there's also a Adobe, Dark, Adobe Spark page where you can kind of create a page of some sort, kind of like a mini um, website that you'd like to create for anyone who want to watch it or look at it. And uh, a lot of people can do their own portfolios with Adobe Spark page and I encourage students to do that. So now that you understand that and that there are three components, now we can go to spark.adobe.com and you need to go there and sign up with your email. Well, now that you've gone over to spark.adobe.com, what you wanna do is uh, click on the um, blue button that says start now. And it's going to guide you to this screen where you can sign up with Adobe Spark uh, with Google, Facebook, Apple, email, or log in with your Adobe ID. I already have an Adobe ID, so I'm going to log in. But again, if you don't have one with Google, um, an email with Google, and you want to do something like Yahoo or AOL, you just sign up with your email, or you can continue with these other options and log in. I'm going to log in with my Adobe ID and just one moment. So now you're brought to this screen and you are given um, options that are at the top. I have other projects that I've already created, so that's why I see my projects down here. Um, but these are allowing you to create um, the other Adobe Spark products that I was telling you about. Now, uh, and I'm going to go to create a project, that big blue button in the left corner, select that. And um, it gives you options of creating a flyer, which would be an Adobe Spark page, uh, Instagram post, which would be Adobe Spark post, or um, other items here that are more uh, uh, print or uh, still based pictures or photos that you can use, um, or create a web page. Again, Adobe Spark page, you can create that. Um, I am selecting Adobe Spark video, so I'm gonna select video here. And then I am going to uh, name my project. And I'm naming the project simply um, Welcome to this class demo. So I'm going to put next. Now you're going to be uh, given the option of picking one of these templates, which are pre made, um, kind of formatted. Uh, templates with graphics a certain way, with transitions a certain way. You can watch any of these and select one if you'd like. I'm going to start from scratch, so I'm going to hit this button. And this is going to give you an option of watching this video that gives you a, a short tutorial. Um, we're going to skip that. And then you're going to be given this screen. This screen um, gives you about three different slides on the bottom. Uh, Adobe Spark Video is kind of composed of slides um, and then each slide is given about 30 seconds a piece. So each one of these little slides here are about 30 seconds a piece. You can add to the slides by hitting the plus button. 
and each one of those slides give you um, an option of adding video, adding text, adding a photo, or adding an icon, as well as you see this microphone button at the bottom. It allows you to do um, record your voice as well. If you've already done video uh, of yourself uh, speaking on screen, then you would attach the vo video or import the video from whatever you've recorded on the computer and then um, add any text that you want or add any photos that you may have on your computer or you can look for other photos elsewhere. Let me first go over here to the upper left corner. You'll see there are several buttons up here. Layout, this gives you the option of having full screen, split screen, uh, video with a uh, caption on the bottom and video with title and text in the middle of the screen where you might have video growing in the background or a photo in the background. It also lets you select your theme. Um, you can pick uh, different colored themes. You have to kind of scroll through these and see which one you know, fix your taste. I'm gonna stick with the first one just because it's easy. If you want to resize the video, um, and this is important for those of you who may be wanting to export this and put it on YouTube or perhaps put it on Instagram. YouTube, you usually do the widescreen. Instagram, you select the square. I would, as a person who's trying to get your video done as quickly as possible, select which one uh, be before you start um, putting together any of the video, select the widescreen or the square, depending on which place that you're going to put it uh, online before you begin to start editing or um, all the graphics and such will change. Then um, you can select music. This music is automatically set so that it's on and you can listen to any of the music selections. If you do not want music behind your uh, voice and you'd rather have it just plain and maybe um, edit it elsewhere and put the music in like you want to because um, then you should export it into another editing program. Um, this music is put on uh, straight all the way through at one level. You can change the level here with the slider, but it stays at that level all the way through from the beginning to the very end without um, being able to uh, control the volume up and down throughout the video. So if you want that kind of specific control, you have to export it without any music on it and then later add your music as you want it in another program. All right, so let's go back to layout. Um, this allows me to figure out where my video and my um, text and everything is. As I said, we're gonna select the first screen. That first screen is about 30 seconds. You control the about the amount of time with this little um, icon in the far right corner with the little timer. You can see it has a slider once you click on it and it can extend for quite some time, as I said, up to about 30 seconds. Um, this changes, of course, no, it does not change. It only goes up to 30 seconds, even with video. So if your video is longer than 30 seconds, you have to cut it up into pieces. My advice to you is if you're going to put video in any of your screens on the bottom that correspond, what you wanna do is record very short uh, pieces that you um, are going to put inside your final piece. That way you don't have to edit um, extremely um, tight when you are uh, putting it inside this interface because it is very particular about how much video that it will take within each screen. If you select video, it's gonna give you this option. You're gonna to go to your um, computer uh, screen and you're gonna be able to upload the video from your computer to Adobe Spark video um, interface. I'm not gonna do that right now. If you wanna put text on the screen, you can select text and you can type and do your typing. I'm gonna say, welcome to the class or welcome back. And uh, you can make this smaller by hitting the minus button, make them real small, or you can make it much bigger. Again, this is in the middle of the screen because we are at full screen. If we did split screen, it's gonna make it on the left, or you can use this little arrow uh, icon and it will move it to the right. 
Well, if you don't want to add text, you can always uh, go to another screen and you can add in a photo or an icon. If you select photo, you're going to first be given this screen. And this allows you to select free photos, and that's where I was at before. Um, you can type in any name of something. You can just put face, and you can give different types of faces. Or if you were looking for a particular thing, like a camera, like I was looking for a video camera, it will give you different cameras that have been, taken, been uh, photographed that you can use on your, uh, your presentation. Um, and uh, the other photos, you can also pit, find something from Adobe Stock, Creative Cloud, Lightroom. Um, if you have your, your Dropbox connected, you can connect your Dropbox to um, this particular uh, interface and you can use any photos from your Dropbox. You can connect uh, photos that you've saved on your Google Drive or your Google Photos. Either way, you have a lot of different options. Also, you can upload a photo right straight from your computer. If you select icon, you can also find icons of different types. You just type in what you want and there will be different selections that you can put on the screen as well. Okay, so since we found a photo that we might want to use, um, let's just pick this one. And then if I want to, in the next slide, um, if I want to on this picture and I want to include some more text, I can put text on the screen as well. I can put a uh, video will be added weekly. And then we can keep it full screen or I can split screen it or I can caption it. Um, or I can title and text it and put more text on the screen. Caption, I can always make it smaller. Let's say that's too big to me. I can always make it smaller, make it really, really small or halfway small or kind of small. Either way, um, the caption gives you a little bit more options than the title and text. Uh, title and text is right in the middle of the screen, just almost like the full screen. And um, if you would like, instead of a photo with uh, pictures on it, you can have video with uh, text on it. Um, if you want a uh, icon with a um, uh, picture or video, you can also do that. You can select an icon and it will give you another video camera. I can select that. Um, let's do that old style and uh, you can add more things as you go along but it's pretty self-explanatory when it comes to putting pictures and video on the screen now if you have selected video i'm going to upload one of the videos that i'll be using in my uh, final piece to show you and um, if you select video like this and let's say i have the welcome to the uh, class i have a good one in here welcome to the class i think this is it hello this is professor esther dillard and as you probably know bloomfield college has taken steps in light of the covid 19 crisis this means in the next couple of weeks you will be getting your classes online so we're going to use that video um to kind of uh give them an explanation of what's happening so i'm going to hit choose for that and it gives you a editing option of only, again, 30 seconds. So you have to trim it up. And every one of my videos, I did very, very short between 12 and 25 seconds. So then I would be under the 30 second mark. So then I just trim it up to where I start speaking, right to where I stop speaking, and then I hit save. And it'll save my clip onto that particular slide. And I will continue doing that along the way, along with slides and video to make my complete video um, uh, go from one slide to the next slide to the next slide. And it, it can be as long as you like it. Um, usually I try to make my video short because students' attention spans are often short and they want something quick and easy to understand. So I try to make it as simple as possible. Um, the only thing that you do need to know is that if you're doing this on a computer, all your video that you use has to be in a small format.
I have found that uh, with this particular uh, Adobe Spark video on the computer, only on the computer, um, it really has a problem with large files. So you have to have very small files. If you are using your mobile device, like your phone or your uh, iPad, it won't give you as much trouble because everything on the iPad and on the phone are small format in the first place. So it's pretty efficient in that manner. So you never have that problem where it says, I can't process this video because it's too big. So once you finish with your um, full lineup of your items that you want in your video, then you're going to either download it, which is this button right here, and it'll go to your computer, and then you can upload it to YouTube, or you can actually hit the share and publish button. I hit the share, hit publish, and um, you title it, you give your subtitle, and then you can pick a category, I would pick education, and it will actually create a link up in Adobe Spark Cloud or Adobe Cloud. And it will allow you to take that link. You can put it in an email. You can put it in an LMS. You can um, put it on your website, whatever you want to do. Um, it will take it and actually show um, the person your video um, off of their cloud. It's kind of like their own little mini YouTube. Um, but YouTube if you want it to live there then you're going to have to download the video and then um, upload it into youtube this gives you a lot more options again you can email it you can put it on your lms you can actually put it in your google drive and um, it will still live there and uh, students can click on it at any time and it takes up a lot less space because that video is living on their server versus on yours Hello, this is Professor Esther Dillard, and as you probably know, Bloomfield College has taken steps in light of the COVID-19 crisis. This means in the next couple of weeks, you will be getting your classes online. And it might be until the end of the semester that you'll have to do your classes online. I want to assure you that I am trying my best to make sure that this class will be as smooth as possible and as easy for you to understand as possible. In the next couple of weeks, I'm going to release some videos that will explain the details of the class, your time frame for assignments, your responsibilities, and finally, your deadlines. I'm going to encourage you to please email me or text me when you have questions in regard to the class or any of your assignments or any of the deadlines. Make sure that you communicate with me. The more we communicate, the easier this process will be and the more success you'll have with this class. Believe me, I really want to make sure that you have success for this class. I hope to see you in the next couple of weeks, actually live online um, with video chat and we'll be able to hopefully share a few stories and hear about what your experiences are during this strange and crazy time. And then also figure out what we're going to do as far as a class um, to make it through to the end of the semester. Mm -hmm.